So now let's explore Atlas A. In Atlas A, we're going to exclude some discussion of general anatomical terminology, the various body regions, the body cavities and their membranes, as well as a brief survey of the organ systems that you'll explore through the next two semesters. Atlas A also includes a visual survey of the body, many different great colored plates of muscles, nerves, veins, and arteries. I'm not going to include them in this presentation, but do spend some time looking through Atlas A in your text. In anatomical position, the person is standing erect with their feet flat on the floor and their arms at their sides, with the palms, face, and eyes facing forward, just like the girl shown over to the left here. This is our standard frame of reference for all anatomical descriptions and dissections. Forearm positions are supinated when the palms face forward or upward. The radius and ulna are parallel. When pronated, the palms face rearward or downward, and the radius and ulna are crossed. The radius is actually so named because it is the one that moves radially around the wrist. It's on the thumb side. We'll come to that in more detail. But just pause for a moment. What position are the hands in, in anatomical position? With the hands facing forward, the wrists would be supinated. Anatomical planes and sections. A section implies an actual cut or slice that reveals internal anatomy. We'll see a lot of these different sections as we explore the cadaver dissection in Anatomy and Physiology Revealed. A plane implies an imaginary flat surface that passes through the body. The sagittal plane here divides the body into left and right regions. The median or the mid-sagittal plane divides the body or an organ into equal halves. A frontal or coronal plane, shown here, is going to divide the body into front and back halves, anterior or posterior portions. The transverse plane or horizontal plane, shown here, divides the body into upper and lower portions. You can see a couple of different sections here. A sagittal section through the pelvic cavity reveals the uterus and the colon. A frontal section through the lungs reveals both left and right lungs and a cross section of the heart. The transverse section here through the skull reveals the eyes and portions of the brain and cerebellum. So now let's take a look at some directional terms. Directional terms are very useful because we're going to use them to describe the position of one structure relative to another structure. First of all, let's look at anterior versus posterior. Anterior generally means to the front and posterior generally means to the rear. Anterior is the portion technically that during locomotion would pass a point first and the posterior side is the part that would pass second. We might say that the sternum, which is the bone in the chest, is anterior to the heart because it's in front of the heart. It would pass a particular point before the heart if a person were locomoting in the forward direction. Superior versus inferior. Superior is above and inferior is below. So here we illustrate superior, here we illustrate inferior. Now remember it's all relative terminology. So we might say something like the heart is superior to the diaphragm because the heart lays here in the chest and the diaphragm lays around here. The diaphragm is a sheet of muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. 
Another two terms that are paired together are proximal and distal. Cr proximal means closer to the point of attachment or origin, and distal means that it's further from that point of attachment. So we'll often use that to refer to positions on the arm. We might say, for example, that the elbow is proximal to the wrist because the elbow here is closer to the point of attachment of the arm than the wrist right here. We also have medial versus lateral. Medial means towards the midline plane and lateral means away from the midline plane. So we might say that the eyes are lateral to the nose because the nose is right on the midline plane and the eyes are out away from the midline plane. We could also say that the nose is medial to the eyes. Then we have superficial versus deep. Superficial means closer to the body surface and deep means further away from the body surface. So we might say that the skin is superficial to the muscles and the muscles are deep to the skin. Cephalic is a term that always means towards the head or the superior end. Now, you might hear me reference, rather than anterior posterior, dorsal and ventral. Dorsal and ventral really apply to quadrupeds, to four-legged animals. So when we discuss quadrupeds, there are different terms that come up. Anterior is equal to the term ventral, and posterior is equal to the term dorsal. Now, if you think about this, if you were to walk on all fours and you had a dorsal fin, the dorsal fin would be right along your spine on the top surface of your body when you were on all fours. The ventral surface is the belly side or the chest side when considering being on all fours. So because there's so much comparative anatomy, we'll often refer to posterior as dorsal and anterior as ventral. Remember that the anterior end or surface is that which during locomotion passes a point first. We also have another couple of terms that come up for quadrupeds. Rostral versus caudal. Rostral is towards the nose end and caudal is towards the tail end. We also can use the term cephalic. Again, cephalic will always mean towards the head, whether we're referring to human anatomical position or the anatomical position of quadrupeds. Now let's look at some body regions. The body's divided into two basic regions, the axial region and the appendicular region. The axial region includes the head, neck, and trunk. It's divided further into thoracic and abdominal. So the thoracic region is the trunk above the diaphragm, whereas the abdominal region is the trunk below the diaphragm. This trunk is divided into either quadrants or regions that look more like a tic-tac-toe grid. And these quadrants or regions are used so that we can describe where a patient is feeling discomfort. We might say that something is going on in the right upper quadrant. We might notice something in the right lower quadrant. Often things in the right lower quadrant might be like pain in the appendix could illustrate an appendicitis. So we just use these grids as ways to describe the regions in which someone is having abdominal discomforts. When we look at the appendicular region, we've got upper limbs and lower limbs, the appendages, hence the appendicular regions. The upper limb is broken further into regions, and so is the lower limb. These are some terms that we will become used to throughout the semester. The arm is also known as the brachial region. This is just the upper arm in purple here. 
The forearm is the antibrachial region, and the wrist is a separate region called the carpal region. The hand, the manual region, and the fingers are the digits. In the lower limb, we have corresponding regions. The femoral region of the thigh, the leg is known as the crural region. This is just the lower leg. The ankle is the tarsal region, the foot, the pedal region, region, and again, the toes are the digits. So this is just an introduction to some of the terminology that we use to describe various body regions. Spend some time with these figures and those that are shown in your text and become familiar with each of these. So again, close your notes and books and take a moment here to work through some of this terminology. First, start with directional terms. What are the pairings of directional terms that you can remember? Again, to start with, don't cheat. Don't go looking in your notes. Just write down everything you can remember about these various directional terms, such as anterior, posterior, dorsal, ventral, lateral, medial. Just pair all of those. And then make some reference, either in diagram or in writing, to which things are in which direction. Remember that there's relativity involved. Also, spend a little moment with the figure below and see if you can sort out some of these different body regions. Then we'll move on to the next section where we'll look at the cavities and membranes.